On a November afternoon in 2007, I went for a horseback ride. I rode up a hillside, and suddenly the horse began to buck. I flew through the air and landed on my heel, forcing the head of my femur through my hip socket, shattering my hip joint. As you can see, the surgeon put my hip back together, but I was told that I would likely walk with a limp. At the time of the accident, I had been working on my PhD. And during my recovery, I took a break from that and I spent a lot of time daydreaming. In one of those daydreams, I would visualize myself walking across the stage to earn my diploma without a limp, which they had said I would likely have, and wearing heels. In all honesty, I've always been a daydreamer. When I was a little girl, my parents used to fight quite a bit late at night. And on those nights, I would slip down the stairs out of sight and sit. One of my brothers would usually join me. We were there just in case my mom needed our protection. In order to distract myself from the stress and tension and the harsh words, I would daydream. I would daydream about happy times with my family and a great future. How many of you have daydreamed recently? Show of hands. Not today during the talks, right? <laughs> well, if you have, don't feel guilty because daydreaming is a universal human experience. And think about this. It's the first virtual world that each of you knew. How cool is that? Well, Unfortunately, daydreaming tends to get a bad rap, and I don't think it should. So today, I'm going to tell you why. Daydreaming has lots of benefits. It's important for developing the imagination, and having an imaginative mind is critical for skills such as inventing new things, solving problems, thinking creatively, and making meaning out of situations. To be clear, I'm not talking about unfocused mind wandering. So if you're working a complex math problem and your mind drifts off, you probably won't do well on that problem. On the other hand, relaxed daydreaming is a way to reflect on life's events and make meaning of those events. During daydreaming, you experience imagery, self-reflection, insight, you make connections between complex ideas, leading to creative thought. Daydreaming is also called positive constructive daydreaming, a term coined by researcher Jerry Singer. He was also a psychologist. During positive constructive daydreams, he said that it was really important to engage your brain and think about what you're reflecting on. In order to understand what's going on during daydreaming, let's take a look inside the brain. Here are some MRI images. Our brain has networks, and this first network is called the looking out network. This network is concerned with the here and now, being in the immediate moment. So this is what your brain would like, look like on the left if you're playing words with friends or sending a text. Then we have the looking in network. This network is concerned with reflection. So, for example, if you're thinking about how much your child or son enjoyed his first day of school, this is what your brain would look like. The more connections you have in your default mode network, the more you've spent time reflecting. And having more connections is associated with increased scores on reading comprehension and memory. <clears throat> Increased connections are also related to self-awareness, moral judgment, empathy, and creativity. And our world desperately needs all of these. I'm concerned that we may be raising a generation of young people who do not daydream frequently enough. As we know, digital media use is on the rise. Attention-demanding activities preoccupy the waking hours of today's children, teens, and adults. Think about it. The interruptions are constant. 
Frequent text messaging and so social media use may be training the developing brains of young people to focus on the external experiences, taking the place of time spent reflecting and daydreaming. Actually, if you speak to most young people today, they'll tell you that they prefer texting to having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And recent research reveals that with an increase in texting comes a decrease in reflection. Do these constant interruptions have implications for identity development in young people? Do they keep us from reflecting? As parents, we all want to keep our children entertained, but I don't necessarily think that it's so bad for them to be bored now and then. Downtime is okay, but they're not bored typically because they're involved in scheduled, structured activities, such as music lessons and organized sports. They're on their devices, as I've mentioned, a lot. And recess has been cut due to a focus on academics and standardized testing. Don't even get me started on standardized testing. <laughs> Do these limited opportunities for reflection have implications for creativity? Unfortunately, research tells us creativity is on the decline in American children in recent decades. And as we know, deep reflection is challenging. It's even uncomfortable. And as humans, it's human nature to avoid something that's uncomfortable. So it makes me wonder, are we avoiding searching the dark corners of our minds for meaning because it's easier to send a text or play a computer game? So, how can we promote creativity in today's children and adults? First, set aside free time. Downtime is okay. Also, we need to reframe boredom so that it can be seen as an opportunity rather than a challenge and a negative. Also, surround yourselves with creative people. Be intentional about this. Schools, what can schools do? I truly believe if schools would just set aside a few minutes for children to reflect and process, their learning would improve, they would be more creative, and guess what? I bet they would score better on those standardized tests, right? Right? Okay. Also, balance is critical. So remember that. You don't want to get so preoccupied daydreaming that you can't take care of the day-to-day -day tasks that are necessary. And finally, encourage children to face their challenges and work through their problems. Facing and overcoming obstacles can be the root of creative thought. As you can see, I eventually did walk across the stage and earn my degree. And guess what? I did not have a limp, and I was wearing heels. I truly believe, thank you. I truly believe that those daydreams of mine were instrumental and played an important role in, reach, in me reaching my goals. As we know, this world is in the hands and will be in the hands of the children that we're raising now. So let's all take the time to engage in imaginative, positive, futuristic thought, and let's encourage our children to do the same. And the next time that you're waiting in line at the grocery store, or stopped at a red light, or in between speakers at a TEDx talk, I'm watching, take a minute and resist the urge to check your phone and look inward and reflect. Thank you.